ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. Um, and as you can see, we're with uh, one of my best friends from school, and I'm sure one of your best friends from school, Daryl Sturgeon, joins us today uh, for the class of 1976 interview. Uh, we've got just a little over, uh, a little less than two months to go before the uh, class reunion, and uh, I'm trying to round up a few interviews. So uh, we want to welcome you, Daryl, and thanks for taking your time to coming down to visit with us today. Nice. And, thanks. Uh, first of all, Daryl, uh, you you kind of sound like I am, and 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 you're retired. Yes. Okay. Would you agree with me? Retirement is where it's at. No, that's I haven't got nothing against it. It's I mean, I retired the day I turned sixty-two, so you could say I couldn't wait. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, well, tell us, Daryl, since since you you retired, what have you been doing with yourself? Uh, I live in Connorsville uh, six months of the year, and uh, then I have a place in Florida. I go down there from October to May, and uh, my wife's sister lives down there, and her other sister comes down there, and I don't know, we just, we got a, quite a few friends down there. We've been going down there for a couple of years. A couple of years before that, we her sister already lived there, and we went down and checked the place out, and then when I was talking about retiring, then we a place came up, so we jumped on it, and uh, been going down there for two years now in the wintertime. How do you like it? Oh, it's nice being warm all the time. Yeah. Nice. A bad day down there is like 74. <laughs> well, I could handle that in January. You get a few days where it may be in the 60s but it don't last long usually rains when that happens okay well daryl uh, let's let's move backward a little bit uh we graduated in 1976 and um we we walked out the door you know hoping for greener pastures what so what happened when you graduated what would you what did you do after you graduated well, at, at first, you know, I, I had high hopes for making big money so and getting a job and finally have some money of my own. So I started looking for a job, and then I got my first job at Stance. So I went there, hired in there, and I, I worked there about three months, and it was okay. But then uh, they... I was notified that they were hiring at Dan M and they asked me if I wanted to go over there and since it paid about four bucks more an hour, I decided to make the move over to Dan M. So I went to Dan M and got on there and started working and it was it wasn't too bad. I mean, I was making good money, thought I was getting rich. I was still living at home with my mom and dad. But I was saving up a lot of money, so I banked a few bucks for three years. But then I got kind of bored of working there, so I decided to try my hand at the military and try to learn something new. But I, I had attempted to get in the military in 1976 also, but at the time they were kind of downgrading the military and... They had a lot of rules, and I got turned down because they they said I had a non-union of the bone from my broken arm from back in the football days, so I didn't get to go into the Navy. So in 1980, I decided I was going to give it another shot, so I joined the Air Force. Then I finally got in. So they let you in the Air Force? Yeah. Okay. I mean... Well, that was back when it started picking up again. Okay. When Reagan started really building up the military again. Um, so, so you served. You were telling me you served four years in the Air Force and then two years in the Reserve. Yes. Okay. And then, uh, so you got out of the Reserve about when? Um, October of 1986. I finished up my two years. Okay. So you finished up your Air Force service and. Uh, you came, you came back to Connersville, okay? What was your next move? Well, I came back after active duty in 84, 
And uh, well, I was I took uh, four years uh, military leave of absence from DNM, so I went right back to work at DNM. I just kept my seniority and then went back to work there. And uh, and then it we were taken over, and I think it was like 1988. And then it kind of went downhill for a couple of years, and then they closed in 1990. So I'd worked there 14 years, and then I lost my job <laughs> with a bunch of other people. Yeah. So, so you were jobless for the first time in, since you got out of high school. Right. Much. Okay. And uh, so what happened then? Well, they, they had some, like, rehabilitation programs. They offered some, like, free education and stuff like that. So I went back to college. Okay. So I signed up for uh, to go to Ivy Tech in Richmond. And I took uh, industrial maintenance since in the military I was in maintenance and I had a maintenance background. I figured that. Maybe I could uh, get into some skilled trades, maybe get an apprenticeship. So I was, at the time, I was working at uh, the marina down at the lake. I did a two-year uh, deal down there working as when I was going to college at Richmond. And... Uh, I did that for two years, and uh, like the money ran out, and uh, I really I I didn't finish the degree. I was going for like a I don't know what you call it, just a certificate of maintenance or whatever. But but I took quite a few classes, and it it was it was really different going back to school after all that time. But I really did a lot better because. I mean, it was, I was trying to get a job out of it this time. <laughs> so uh, it was, tried a lot more and uh, really I did pretty good. But as, as I tried to get a job in that field, well, at the same time, uh, everywhere, 1990 was the, the big recession started. And DNM had shut down and H.H. H. Robinson had shut down and there was a flood of maintenance men on the market. So the market wasn't too hot for maintenance men. So what ended up happening? So I quit. I quit working at the lake, and I went to work for Dave Carr down at his little factory he had in town, Triple C Fabrication. And we were in the aluminum fabrication business. It was just like a little five-man shop. It was easy work, and we had a lot of fun down there. What's the triple C stand for? It was uh, Dave Carr and his father, and uh, Vaughn Carr, yeah. and uh, Mr. Crabtree, which was the plant manager at Custom Extrusions. And we did uh, fab fabrication work for the that contracted out from Custom Extrusions. All right, so that lasted a little while, I guess. Um, well, I was, I was in my second year, and then they had started hiring up at Ford. So I put my application in up there and everything, and then I finally got on at Ford. So I quit that place, and then I started working at Ford. And I went up there, and then... I worked there for six years, and then for the second time, I had to go through a place shutting down and everybody losing their job. So it, it, it had become Visteon by this time, Yes, right? it, okay. the last couple of years it, it became Visteon. Okay, all right. And um, so it shut down, and again, you were, you were... Again, I was out of a job in 2000. Okay, all right. So, so uh, what happened then? Uh, well, I was I was on unemployment for a while. It was it was paying pretty good, and uh, so I just rode that unemployment train for a while, and uh, 
then it finally ran out and so I had to get a job again so I started looking for a job and uh, I got a quick job I was working at J&J packaging over in Liberty it's kind of a little packing place over there where they do batteries and stuff I mean it was it was a fill-in for money until something else better came along well then after I'd worked there about six months then they were hiring up at the custom extrusions it wasn't called that anymore but it had changed hands but I just call it that because everybody knows what I'm talking about so then I went there and started working and then it got bought out but I didn't lose my job this time and uh, it, it kind of got better money-wise. Then we got bought out again, and then it, cha it's, it changed hands three times since I worked there. But I finished up my working career up there. I, had, I ended up with 15 years working there, finished up my working days up there. And uh, it, it was an okay job. It paid pretty good. At that time, I was too old to mess around trying to get new work. And uh, I just wanted to finish up and get to the finish line so I could start collecting. So uh, I, I, I was up and down, but uh, I made it through, you know. So during all this time now, so, so now you're married, right? Right. Okay. And your wife's name is what? My wife's name is Nancy. Nancy, okay. <clears throat> I, I do believe, I think, when you were seeing her, or before you were married to her, and this was back. I think I met back. her in like 1988. Okay, okay. I think I was around here doing something. I don't know what. But, yeah, so you guys have been married about 22, 23 years yes. now. Okay. And uh, what did, did Nancy work or anything? Well, she worked. She worked at Ford Vestion also. Oh, okay. She retired in I think 2003. So she made it to the. She made her 30 years, and she retired in 2003. So she was been waiting on me till now to retire. Okay. She's a little older than you, isn't yes. she? Yes. Okay. Um, so. Um, uh, did did along the way anywhere? Did you have any children or anything? I personally don't have any children, but she had two children already. Okay. And uh, they were like five and six years old. They're not five and six anymore. No, they're they? in their forties now. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, my wife and I, we don't have any children at all. Right. You know. As far as myself personally, I I didn't have any. Um. So, <clears throat> you, you, when you got to 62, I mean, you were pretty happy. Right. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't going to mess around and work anymore. Yeah. They couldn't talk me into it. So, so you have to pay out for your own health insurance, though. Well, I, I did. I am, I'm on the uh, veterans. That's right. Yeah. That's so right. I, I didn't have any for a while. I had to, believe it or not, I had to fight to get that. Because they just don't give it to you anymore. They said I made too much money. Really? Yeah. Okay. So, but now as being a retired. Yeah, person. since I got down on Social Security, now I'm under the limit. So now they finally gave it to me. Okay. But I had to roll the dice for a couple of years without any insurance. Wow. So right now, if you need an appointment or something, do you have to go to Dayton or Indianapolis? I There's a clinic in Richmond that I okay. go to. Okay. And then the nearest VA hospital is where? Uh. I would go to Dayton if Dayton. I had to be in the hospital or whatever. Okay. Or they'll send you to wherever, you know. Okay. So uh, I'm interested to find out, you know, uh, since you've been going to Florida now for a couple of years, you guys moved down there in the wintertime. Did, right. Did you guys just rent a place? Did you buy a place down there? Or? We have a park model and a resort. Now, what is that? It is like, it's not really a house trailer. It's bigger than a house trailer. And then it has a room on the side of it. Oh, okay. All right. So, I mean, it stays there. So how do you like living down there six months under Governor Ron DeSantis? Nah, he's, it, it was a lot better down there, a lot more. But I mean, they, they had some rules and stuff down there too. But yeah. 
it was like do what you wanted pretty much but they have mask mandates in or um, i think he he called the mask mandate off i think yeah but a lot of people still wore them though yeah okay it's it's a pretty much where we live it's a lot of retired people so most people are older so it's nice and quiet there oh yeah it's pretty much quiet okay but, uh, all right so i want to jump back real quick um and talk to you about our football days in school um, <clears throat> just to remind everybody daryl was a heck of a long snapper um, being a place kicker you know you rely on somebody snapping the ball back there consistently and at the right height for the holder to, to put the ball down and daryl was always on target i you know i really appreciate that daryl i never told you then but i you know tell you now right uh, but at some point you weren't always you weren't always a center okay but one year you came back and you were determined to be a center what 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 happened you know from the one season to the next where you said i'm, I'm gonna go for this do you remember uh, i just wanted to try a new, different spot i'd played all the other spots so okay <clears throat> i just thought i'd give it a shot but it i didn't really like it that much well, I thought you did a good, uh, more than good, an outstanding job. So thank you. Uh, you played? Did you play on the defensive side too? Yes. Okay. What did you play there? I was a uh, down tackle. Okay. If if you if any couple things that stood out about playing high school sports that that you still think of fondly now. I just. It was kind of, you know, being with everybody and stuff, you know, and a lot of different people, you know. You, most of the people that I, I, you know, played the sports with and stuff, that's I keep in touch more with them than most other people, you know. I, I don't really keep in touch with a whole lot of people, but uh, there's a few. Who do you keep in touch with here? Uh, Tom Gossett is still in town, and uh, – he came. He comes to Florida in the winter time too. We get together from time to time down there, and uh, and Dave Carr. He, I've started getting back in touch with him here lately. And uh, and I, Phil Smith, I see him around from time to time. But uh, other than that, I don't really see a whole lot of ex uh, people he went to school with. You know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Around most of them aren't around this area, pretty much. Well, well I used to run into Mindy Gibbons uh, at the post office. She worked up here at the post office, and I think she works at another location now most of the time. But I used to bump into her all the time, and uh, I was always happy to see her. Uh, but uh, every now and then, I you know I run across somebody. If you stand up at Walmart long enough, you'll see everybody right. you know in this town. I I ran into Steve Hoagland one time, not too long ago, and I ran into Keith Fielden one time, not too long ago. We had a nice talk, had a few laughs. Uh, I just, you know, every once in a while, I can't really think of anybody right offhand, but you know, I do from time to time run into somebody here or there. Okay, all right. Well, Daryl. Uh I really appreciate you joining us today. Right. Uh, we'll get this up online for folks to see, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of people that enjoy hearing what you've done in your life. And, and uh, uh, big question is, are you coming to the reunion? Well, I, I wanted to say something about, too, I, that we just had that Reds game where – we went down to Cincinnati, and there was 50 or 60 people there. That's a lot more than I thought. And I, they were talking about doing it again next year. So if anybody didn't come next year, I mean, you ought to come down there because you're not sitting outside or nothing. You're, you're like in an air-conditioned uh, suite, like uh, where companies have their own private little room. And they set out food, and they had a bar in there, and you can have drinks if you drink. And everybody just sat around and ate and drank and talked. And everybody did, you know. 
I don't think really a whole lot of people watched the game all that much. Everybody was just pretty much uh, talking to everybody, you know. They didn't care about the game, huh? <laughs> I saw quite a few people there, and, you know. I, I talked to probably about ten people probably. Oh, okay. He was there for so long. You know, he was only there so long, and yeah, you get to talking to people, you know. And before you know it, the three hours is up, you know. Well, I, you know, before Turner Field, uh, before the Atlanta Braves – built their new stadium. I was working at the paper in, in Marietta, Georgia, and I went to Turner Field before it closed, and we did a feature on a man there. <clears throat> He'd been a season ticket holder of the Braves since 1965. So I went in there, and, and uh, uh, I got to see a lot of the suites that they had there, you know. It's right. nothing like the ones they got now, uh, but, uh, you know. It was, it was really enjoyable to go in there and see these big, you know, paintings of Hank Aaron in there, you know, back in his days. I mean, he is, right. he is quite the revered man in Atlanta, you know. And, uh, uh, he was, in fact, I think he was the first player to hit a home run in Riverfront Stadium when it opened. Might and, have uh, been. Which I was disappointed, you know, but uh, <laughs> he was a great player, you know. I mean, it's, it was nothing you could – you know, say about that other than he was a great player, you know. But uh, uh, I did not realize that there were that many people would go to the Reds game, but, you know. You know, well, like uh, you know, you might think $85 a person is a lot of money to do that, but it's for what, what you're getting, I mean, where you're sitting and, you know, you're in that nice little room there with everybody. And it's, it's just about as cheap as just buying a ticket and going down there, you know. Tickets are not cheap. No, no. I mean, like I say, you got your money's worth. Yeah. Believe me. And, then, you know, like I say, if it, if they have it again next year, people ought to come to it because, it, you know, it was pretty good time. Okay. So getting back to my original question, do you think you'll come to the reunion? Um, I, I'm going to go to that dinner at Kent's Arbor, I think. And I, I think I'm going to go to the other thing, too. Okay. Well, I think – I think the Friday night thing at Ainsley's. Yeah, that's. I think that's free. Right. Okay. Uh, but then the dinner the following day at uh, third place in Brookville, uh, I think that was what. Twenty five dollars a person. 20, I think twenty five a person. But I mean, they, if you eat out right now, it's fifty bucks anywhere you go for two people. So I mean, you might. Yeah. It's it's a good deal. Yeah, it is. It is, and and. Uh, uh, I've been looking forward to it, you know. Uh, uh, I may need some help getting up and down the steps. I might have to call on Phil Smith or somebody. <laughs> He's about the biggest guy uh, left in the class that I know right now. But, uh, it, you know, I've been to several of the reunions, and I've, I've enjoyed myself at the last the one in the, that we had prior to this, the uh, 40th one, was, was really outstanding. Then the one when we got together at Hagerstown at the at – the, Right. It used to be Wellivers. I don't. Yeah. It's, uh, I didn't. I, no, I didn't go to that one. It was really good. It was really good. The food was great, <coughs> and uh, a lot of folks showed up, and uh, and I enjoyed myself. And uh, I'm I'm always the official photographer, so right. We get a lot of good pictures. You know, people are just happy and jovial. I think at know. the ball game, I think Donna was the official photographer down there. Donna, yeah. yeah. Well, she did a good job. Did you did, have you seen any pictures she yeah, took? Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen any. Are, yeah. are, are they on that? They're on Facebook. Your Facebook thing. Yeah, they're on Facebook. Right. But, uh, but um, you need to join Facebook, Daryl, so you can you can at least look at the class page. You know? Well, my wife's on there. Oh, is she? Okay. But uh, anyway, we'll just wrap this up today and uh, get this up online. Thanks for coming down, Daryl. I, right. I hope I can meet with some other people here before the reunion, but if not, if we don't, then uh, that'll be about it. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Good to see you. It's good to see you too, Daryl. <laughs>